My name is Nathan Agan. Uh, I am the uh, host and producer of The Working Actor's Journey, started as a podcast. And uh, over 2020, we uh, did some live stream readings, and that kind of morphed into these workshops that we've been doing uh, a few times, uh, including you know the, the final presentations this week. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of uh, context about what this is, in case you haven't seen the, uh, the previous evenings, so uh, we've taken one scene with a group, a uh, director and actors and a dramaturg and a vocal coach, and really dived deep into the text of that one scene over a month. And uh, as any of these artists uh, will attend, um, uh, that is such a luxury to have that amount of time to work on this material. Uh, you know, even in professional productions, you're lucky if you get three to four weeks of rehearsal. Uh, very quickly, you're up on your feet and uh, just trying to stage everything. So uh, we were excited to be able to put the focus on the text, and, and that's really been um, a, a great experience uh, for everybody. Uh, to let you know, there is uh, one more evening of scenes uh, tomorrow, February 12th uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific. We have a couple scenes from As You Like It. And uh, yeah, so I will, uh, I will include some links uh, later this evening, but basically where you reserve the ticket for tonight, you can go back to that same place uh, and uh, get a ticket for As You Like It, everything's for free. Um, we, uh, we do plan to do more workshops and, and are exploring other opportunities. And so by signing up, we'll definitely let you know, keep you apprised of things, whether you would be interested to join as an actor, as an attendee, or just continue to come to these, uh, these scene evenings. Uh, and one of the other things we were excited to start is a coaching system where many of the artists uh, and actors that you see this week are available for one-on-one -on -one private coaching. Anything from auditions to uh, acting in general, to Shakespeare, uh, to singing, uh, you know, you can book your time directly with them. So we're excited to, uh, again, make more ways for you to connect with these <clears throat> experienced professionals. Uh, for this evening, uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, uh, there is a, a Q&A uh, or portion, you know, assuming we don't go too, too long, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the Zoom chat box, uh, and those will come right to me, and I'll gather all those. Please feel free to put any other feedback as we're going uh, and, and things like that, and I'll definitely share that with uh, the artists, um, you know, either during tonight or afterwards if we run out of time. Um, but uh, yeah, we, you know, we, we definitely welcome your, your questions about the process, the scene, uh, anything you're curious about. Um, I will uh, send out a replay link, uh, give us a day or two, hopefully it'll be sooner, um, but uh, you'll be able to you know, watch this back if you, if you need to leave or you just wanna review anything. Uh, and one of the things uh, you know, that we were very excited about with this week and you'll have noticed with the other scenes is that we can really focus on gender blind, uh, age blind and color blind casting with this because we're putting the, uh, the focus on the text. And that's been really exciting. Uh, and uh, every, of the, every one of the actors that uh, registered uh, had the opportunity to work with a, a text coach and a voice coach. So again, it's, it's been really exciting to bring uh, this level of professionals to newer or younger actors uh, and uh, you know, just introduce them to uh, how professionals work on this stuff. So uh, tonight is a continuation of the workshops uh, that the actors and, and the director and, and dramaturg have been doing. Uh, and so it's, it, uh, the groups handle it differently. You might see them go back and rework a section, go back and rework the whole scene, uh, you know, do notes. So you know, this is meant to just kind of be a continued peek into that process. Uh, let me do a quick uh, introduction of uh, everybody that you'll you'll see, and they'll be on uh, in, you know, in a moment. But uh, the director is Gigi Birmingham, uh, playing uh, uh, King John is Marcelo Toubert, uh, playing Queen Eleanor is uh, Madeline Person, playing Philip Falconbridge is Ross Helwig, and playing Chatillion and Robert Falconbridge is Karina Chrisman. Don't believe I forgot about it. Oh, and uh, in a second, you'll see him too. Uh, our dramaturge for this evening is Gideon Rappaport. So I believe that's it for me. That covers everything. Again, if you have any questions, notes, uh, anything like that, any feedback for the actors, please feel free to uh, uh, utilize those uh, uh, Zoom uh, emoticons or emojis uh, through this. We appreciate you guys being on mute and uh, off camera. It's 
just not the same as being in a theater, but we're, we're doing our best to at least kind of bring that experience as, as best we can. Uh, and with that, I'll wrap up here and I will turn it over to Gideon uh, and he'll share a little bit more about the play that you're going to see the scene from and we'll go from there. So Gideon, uh, it's off to you. Thank you, Nathan. So I will just give a little bit of background of this play. Um, it's set in medieval England. Shakespeare gets it, the plot, uh, the stories from Hollinshed for the most part. Uh, the backstory is Henry II, the great King Henry II had several sons um, and his sons were in a very complex relation with him, sometimes rebelling against him, sometimes making peace. The sons that matter to us are the heir to the throne who was Richard the Lionheart, whom you all know from being absent uh, during the Robin Hood stories when Prince John later becomes King John. Um, he, his, he's called Cord a Lion, the heart of a lion. Uh, we call him Richard the Lionheart. He's got two younger brothers. One of them named Geoffrey is a bastard. That is, he was born out of wedlock to the king. Um, the other one, younger, is John, and he was legitimate, and he was born within wedlock to the king. So he, John, inherits the throne with the passing of Richard the Lionheart. There's a, a fly in the ointment, and that is Geoffrey's young son, whose name is Arthur, has a mother named Constance who believes that Arthur should be the king. Because he's the son of an older brother than John, he has some claim to the throne. So he's pushed to claim that throne, though he's a young boy, by his mother and by the King of France. So that's backstory. Now what we have before us is the entry of two brothers, uh, sons of a father who's got a chunk of land at, that brings in 500 pounds a year. And Sir Robert uh, is the, the name of this um, landholder. He dies and he leaves two sons, an older son named Philip, and a younger son named Robert. Both of them are claiming the inheritance of this chunk of land and income. And the question is why? And the answer is it's thought that the elder Philip, like Geoffrey, is a bastard. So who was his real father? And can he inherit from his legal father when he's someone else's son? And that's all I want to say. You will find the unfolding of the story in a moment. Now I will introduce Gigi Birmingham, who's directed the scene, and I will be in the background. Uh, hello, it's uh, so sad not to be able to see you all. Thank you for coming tonight. I don't have anything to add. Thank you so much, Gideon, for your brilliant uh, explanation of the backstory. My concentration in directing the actors has been primarily um, the way I would direct anyone in any scene. Well, you know, what, what is their motivation? What, what is the obstacle to their, to getting what they want and how, what action are they going to take to get what they want? So that's what we've talked about. And um, of course, the given circumstances and um, anything that you would study for any, any, any scene, any play. So uh, now I'm going to uh, allow the actors to present uh, the, the first, uh, the first, uh, run through of this scene and then after that first uh, first presentation we'll we'll continue to to rehearse and to work on it all right actors please join me this is our king john this is our queen eleanor and this is chatillion now say chatillion what would france with us Thus, after grieving, speaks the King of France in my behavior to the majesty, the borrowed majesty of England here. A strange beginning, borrowed majesty. Silence, good mother, hear the embassy. Philip of France, in right and true behalf of thy deceased brother Geoffrey's son, Arthur Plantagenet, lays most lawful claim to this fair island and the territories to Ireland, Portiers, Anjou, Touraine, Maine, 
desiring thee to lay aside the sword which sways you serpently these several titles and put the same into young Arthur's hand, thy nephew and right royal sovereign. What follows if we disallow of this? The proud control of fierce and bloody war to enforce these rights so forcibly withheld. Here have we war for war and blood for blood, controlment for controlment. So answer France. Then take my king's defiance from my mouth, the farthest limit of my embassy. Bear mine to him and so depart in peace. Be thou as lightning in the eyes of France, for ere thou canst report, I will be there. The thunder of my cannon shall be heard. So hence, be thou the trumpet of our wrath and sullen passage, presage of your own decay. An honorable conduct let him have. Pembroke, look to it. Farewell, Chatillon. What now, my son? Have I not ever said how that ambitious Constance would not cease till she has kindled France and all the world upon the right and party of her son? This could have been prevented by easy arguments of love, which now the manage of two kingdoms must with fearful bloody issue arbitrate. Our strong possession and our right for us. Your strong possession much more than your right, or else with me, it must go wrong with you and me. So much my conscience whispers in my ear, which none but God and you and I shall hear. My liege, here is the strangest controversy come from the country to be judged by you that e'er I heard. Shall I produce the men? Let them approach. Our abbeys and our priories shall pay this expedition's charge. What men are you? Your faithful subject, I, a gentleman born in Northamptonshire and eldest son, as I suppose, to Robert Falconbridge, a soldier by the honor giving hand of Cord Lion knighted in the field. Uh, and what are thou? The son and heir to that same Falconbridge. Is that the elder and art thou the heir? You came not of one mother, then, it seems. Oh, most certain of one mother, mighty king, that is well known. And as I think, one father. But for the certain knowledge of that truth, I put you o'er to heaven and to my mother. Of that I doubt, as all men's children may. Oh, John, thee rude man, thou dost shame thy mother and wound her honor with this diffidence. Aye, madam, no. I have no reason for it. That's my brother's plea and none of mine. The which if he can prove, he pops me out at least from fair 500 pound a year. Heaven guard my mother's honor and my land. A good blunt fellow. Uh, why being younger born doth he lay claim to thine inheritance? Well, I know not why except to get the land, but once he slandered me with bastardy. But where I be as true begot or no, that still I lay upon my mother's head. But that I am as well begot, my liege, fair fall the bones that took the pains for me, compare our faces and be judge yourself. If old Sir Robert did beget us both, and were our father and this son like him, oh, old Sir Robert, father, on my knee, I give heaven thanks I was not like to thee. Why, what a madcap hath heaven lent us here. He has a trick of Curd Lion's face. The accent of his tongue affecteth him. Do you not read some tokens of my son in the large composition of this man? Mine eye hath well examined his parts and find them perfect, Richard. Uh, Sirrah, speak. What doth move you to claim your brother's land? Because he hath a half face like my father. With half that face would he have all my land. A half face groat, 500 pound a year. My gracious liege. When that my father lived, your brother did employ my father much. Well, sir, by this you cannot get my land. Your tale must be how he employed my mother. And once dispatched him in an embassy to Germany, there with the emperor to treat of high affairs touching the time. And the advantage of his absence took the king, and in the meantime sojourned at my father's, where how he did prevail, I shame to speak. But truth is truth. Large lengths of seas and shores between my father and my mother lay, as I have heard my father speak himself, when this same lusty gentleman was got. 
upon his deathbed, he by will bequeathed his lands to me and took it on his death that this my mother's son was none of his. And if he were, he came into the world full 14 weeks before the course of time. Then good my liege, let me have what is mine, my father's land as was my father's will. Sirrah, your brother is legitimate. Your father's wife did after wedlock bear him, and if she did play false, the fault was hers, which fault lies in the hazards of all husbands that marry wives. Tell me, uh, how if my brother, who, as you say, took pains to get this son, had of your father claimed this son for his? In sooth, good friend, your father might have kept this calf bread from his cow from all the world. In sooth, he might. Then if he were my brother's, my brother might not claim him, nor your father being none of his, refuse him. This concludes. My mother's son did get your father's heir. Your father's heir must have your father's land. Shall then my father's will be of no force to dispossess that child which is not his? No more force to dispossess me, sir, than was his will to get me, as I think. Whether has thou rather be a Falcon Bridge, or, and like thy brother to enjoy thy land, or the reputed son of Curdelion, Lord of thy presence and no land besides. Madam, if my brother had my shape and I had his, Sir Robert's his like him, and if my legs were two such riding rods, my arms such eelskin stuffed, my face so thin that in mine ear I durst not stick a rose, lest men should say, look where three farthings goes, and to his shape were heir to all this land, would I might never stir from off this place, I would give it every foot to have this face. I would not be Sir Nob in any case. I like thee well. Wilt thou forsake thy fortune, quit thy land to him and follow me? I am a soldier and now bound to France. Brother, take you my land. I'll take my chance. Your face hath got 500 pound a year, yet sell your face for five pence and tis dear. Madam, I'll follow you unto the death. Nay, I'd have rather have you go before me thither. Our country manners give our betters way. <laughs> what is thy name? Philip, my liege, so is my name begun. Philip, good old Sir Robert's wife's eldest son. Uh, from henceforth, bear his name whose form thou bearest. Kneel down, Philip, but rise more great. Arise, Sir Richard and Plantagenet. Brother by the mother's side, give me your hand. My father gave me honor, yours gave land. Now blessed be the hour by night or day when I was got, Sir Robert was away. <laughs> the very spirit of Plantagenet. I am the, thy grandam, Richard. Call me so. Oh, madam, by chance, but not by truth. What though? Something about a little from the right, in at the window or else o'er the hatch, who dares not stir by day must walk by night, and have is have, however men do catch. Near or far off, well won is still well shot, and I am I, howe'er I was begot. Go, Falconbridge, now hast thou thy desire. A landless knight makes thee a landed squire. Come, madam, and come, Richard, we must speed for France, for France, for it is more than need. Brother, adieu. Good fortune come to thee. For thou wast got in the way of honesty. <laughs> A foot of honor, better than I was, but many a many foot of land, the worse. Well, now can I make any Joan a lady? <laughs> Good in, Sir Richard. Uh, God a mercy, fellow, and if his name be George, I'll call him Peter, for new made honor doth forget men's names. It's too respective and too sociable for your conversion. Now, your traveler, he and his toothpick at my worship's mess, and when my nightly stomach is sufficed, 
Why, then I suck my teeth and catechize my picket man of countries. My dear sir, thus leaning on my elbow, I begin, I shall beseech you, that is question now, and then comes answer like an absy book. Oh, sir, says answer, at your best command, at your employment, at your service, sir. Oh, no, sir, says question, I, sweet sir, at yours. And so answer knows what question would, saving in dialogue of compliment and talking of the Alps, the Apennines, the Pyrenean and the River Po, it draws toward supper in conclusion so. But this is worshipful society and fits the mounting spirit like myself, for he is but a bastard to the time that doth not smack of observation. And so am I, whether I smack or no. And not alone in habit and device, exterior form, outward accoutrement, but from the inward motion to deliver sweet, sweet, sweet poison for the age's tooth, at which, though I will not practice to deceive, yet to avoid deceit, I mean to learn, for it shall strew the footsteps of my rising. You're muted, Gigi. Sorry, thank you for pointing that out. I was saying that was, uh, was, it was wonderful. Uh, it was a very abrupt departure, but, but, but the meat was there. So thank you for that. Did you want to say something right away, Gideon? Uh, I got a few specific line notes if you want me to do that whenever uh, you, you want. Yes, why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay, uh, starting from the beginning, um, line 10, um, Chatillon to this fair island instead of Ta, that's my, my um, hobby horse. Um, <laughs> King at line 56. Uh, you are, you, you, I am hearing what are thou, and it needs to be what art thou with the T. Oh, yes, I think you, what art thou? What art thou? Art thou? Yes. Um, sure line 93 to. is um, also the king. All right. Mine, what did I write? Well, oh, mine eye hath well examined his parts instead of my eye, mine eye. I think that mine was eye hath, Yeah, mine eye hath well examined his parts and finds them perfect riches. Oh, I know, I know what it was. You said find them and it's finds them. Finds, it finds them perfect and finds them perfect. Yes. Make sure you hit all those consonants. At yes, the, the consonants, please, especially on Zoom. Um, Robert Falconbridge at line 104, mm -hmm. uh, to, um, that time instead of the time. Yes, yeah. Um, Philip, line 141, um, and if. I swallowed the and, didn't I? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, King at line 166. Um, uh, you left out the thou. Kneel thou down, Philip, but rise. Yes, I've, you know, I've been doing that uh, consistently. Uh, you know, so that, that now it's time to just poke my eye out. Okay. I will not <laughs> poke your eye out, but I will repeat myself <laughs> if I have. I have no, listen, I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate Philip, it. line 220. Um, what is it? Oh, no, it was um, my, what was it? 9200, I'm sorry. Mine elbow, not my elbow, but mine elbow. Mine, thank you. Um, at line 208, uh, Alps and Apennines rather than Alps, the Apennines. Oh, did I say and the Apennines? No, you didn't say and the, you said of the Alps, the Apennines, instead of, the, of the Alps and Apennines. Gotcha, thank you. And last one uh, at line 222. Um, um, yeah, I wouldn't hit the my so much. I would go more for the rising. Rising, okay. I loved the way you did that speech in general. I wanna say everybody did a wonderful job. And I, I really love the way you did that speech, but um, 
but go for the last word rather than the pronoun. Thank you. That's it for me for now. Okay. Thanks, I, Gideon. Uh, and and I, just, I just have one for you, um, Philip, and that is 211. Um, ob, I'm so sorry, that's not, that's not, 214, observation. observation. Right, I, I did, I stretch it out, the multi-syllabic. You, you need those three um, feet of the of Observation, the thank you. That's not smack of observation. Great. Uh, that was not a line reading, that was just uh, for the meter. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. But, however, so are you, are you finished, uh, Gideon? Yes, ma'am. So do this now for a second, Gideon. Yes. Go like that. <laughs> um, so everybody, this is so important what Gideon shares with us. But for this next um, run through, I want you to not worry about that. I want us to just concentrate on the intentions and the given circumstances. So you can just uh, relax a little bit about the speech. I thought it was, it's awesome. You know, um, Although Nathan says it's, it's such so luxurious to have four weeks to work on the scene, together with your director, you've only actually had um, once a week for an hour and a half or two hours. For This is the fourth time. So we've only had three rehearsals prior to this for an hour and a half or two hours. So we've actually had very little time together. And I know some of you have had some time with Gideon um, and, and Ursula uh, for voice, and that's fantastic. But actually, we haven't had very much time together. So we're just going to continue um, to work on the material, okay? Um, I have some technical things. So, um, Karina, um, do you have hair clips or something to put your hair back? Nothing, or even a rubber band, something, because it is a little distracting when it falls into your face. Um, so, I'll start at the top. King John, if there's anything yes. you can do to um, begin the scene, um, with sort of um, oomph, that is to say, to present, to present uh, the beginning of the scene that you are you are deigning to speak now, and so it can be a little a little more. Um, is it like a little kingly, more formal? Kingly presentational. A little more formal. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, formal is not the word I'm looking for. Just uh, announcing yourself by speaking. You're announcing your. Um, you're opening the floor. Do you see what I'm saying? I am. Yeah. I do. Okay, good, good. We'll, um, we'll see. It's an invitation. You know, you're invite you're inviting the the proceedings to begin. You're here for for the re reception of whomever is coming before you, right? Okay. Gotcha. Um that was great presenting presenting the news, Chatillion. That was that was wonderful. Um you've been working with Gideon? Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah, nice, nice work. Very nice, both of you. Um, so Chantilly, you know you left too early, right? You want to wait till King John releases yeah. you. He says farewell, Chantilly, and so that that's yeah, that's the, the very subtle hint that that's the moment to to leave. Um, Queen Eleanor, take some deep breaths as you as you work. Take deep breaths because, um, especially in Shakespeare, you don't want to be breaking up lines at places that. It, they shouldn't be broken. Do you know what I mean? You want to be sure to have enough breath to follow through on the, the line. Um, King John. Yes. Our strong possession. Where is that? Our strong possession. Uh, that's right a, to, 39. Yes. yes. So what are, you, what are you doing there? What, what are you doing there? Why are you replying to her in that way? It's not even a full sentence. What are you, what are you saying to her? She says. So have, by she possession, says we have, we, by the possession, we have, we have the right to this. It's ours. Um, and do you really? Uh, well, in, in his, in my mind, yes. Yeah, but isn't it, it, are you defending a little bit? I don't know, I don't know, I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or you're telling her to shut up or something. I just think it can be, it can be, it can be sharper in that you're, you're trying to suppress her in a way, I think. Yeah, a strong position, a right press. Yeah, it's an odd. It's a, I find it an odd line. That's probably why you're you're picking up a little bit on that. Um, uh, not I don't think I was hesitant with it, but it's um, um, it, it needs a little more oomph to it. Okay. I think it's a strong reply. It's a rebuttal to her nagging at you. She's she's like re She's 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 uh, blaming you. She's uh, you know she's she's telling you. I told you so. I. Freaking told yeah. you this would happen. 
right? This, told is, this, you could, this, have been, you know, this could have been prevented. This could have been and... prevented. You're not, you know, he's got a point. Are you the king? I don't know. And you're like, I'm the king. I'm right. here. Who's who's sitting in this throne? I'm here. Just put, just try and shut her up. Gotcha. You're not going to shut her up, but you know, in a kingly way, try to shut her up. <laughs> well, um, I like it. Thanks. Okay, everybody. What I've talked about the grand, the the you know, the royal, the royal, constant, openness, power emanating from your chest, authority. You're all authoritative beings, so everyone should have this kind of the pride of stature. Um, Y'all watch Downton Abbey? Yeah. I mean, that was only 100, you know, 150 years, 100, 100 years ago, right? Um, but the, the breeding that the um, upstairs family possesses prevents them from ever caving over. You never see them cave over. Even Lady Edith, when she's in utter despair and weeping, she still weeps with her back straight. She might do this, but she would never, you know, she would never do this. She would never collapse. This remains when you will have royalty or you have stature, you just, it's the first thing you're taught is you stand with self-respect. So I think everybody, everybody in the, um, in this story um, can afford to stand with authority. King John. Yes. Um, around 58, 58. Is that the is elder? That the, remember that on 58, is that the elder and art thou to a, the heir that you're speaking there. to Robert? Remember that you're speaking to Robert? Yeah, so, so uh, well, I'm speaking, uh, yes. Is that the elder? I mean, is that the elder and art thou the heir? Right? Yeah. So because because I've, I've have, I have uh, Robert to my right. Is that the, no, but he's, he's, he's asking, um, is that the elder? Uh, yeah, is that and, the elder and art thou the heir? You're, the heir? To, you're talking to Robert, but who responds to you is Philip. Philip. So twice you ask Robert something and Philip responds. So yeah. I know we're on Zoom and like, where is everybody? And am I on my right or on my left? That doesn't matter. You can always, you can always win by looking into camera. So whoever you're speaking to, look into camera if you like. And then- Well, I, I had a little Marcel, note. So let me just finish my thought, yeah. okay? My thought is just that you can look into camera when you're speaking to Robert, and then when Philip responds, look elsewhere. Like you're talking to Robert, but then look elsewhere. It doesn't matter where you look, but you're getting your response not from the person you're talking to. That will clarify for us that you were supposed to be getting a response from Robert. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I think I have um, uh, Robert. Uh, is that the elder? I had him here. Or is that the elder? And are thou the heir? So I had them in two different places, but is that the elder and art thou? I mean, I could just keep it here. Is that the elder and art thou the heir? I don't know if that makes sense. What I'm saying is, as long as you shift your focus from whoever mm -hmm. you're asking the question to, we will know that somebody else is answering you. You're not yes. getting the answer from the person that that. Otherwise, it looks like I don't want to spend too much time on this. It just looks yeah, no, like I, were, I, I got you. It looks like you, you were asking Rob. It looks like you were asking Philip, "Is that the elder and art thou the heir?" Right now, the way it is. So, um, I, I, this might be more than we can handle on Zoom. But on fifty-eight and ninety-three, you're asking Robert, and then it's Philip who answers you. So I'm just saying for your response, you ask the question, and you might just look somewhere else for when you hear the response, if it's easy yeah. to do. Yeah, I got. Um, I think I got it. Um, for the asides between Queen Eleanor and King John, you might want to, um, you're doing, Marcelo uh, is doing great, um, uh, Queen Eleanor, you might notice he, he comes very close to the, to the camera to show us that it's an aside, or I don't even mind if you guys do this or that, whatever, well, I don't care, I mean, they wouldn't do that, but, um, so it's better if you just approach Ooh. the camera, yeah, I don't, th this doesn't work because that's no. so plebeian, um, but just move closer to the camera so we know it's an aside. And remember that it is an aside between you. Um, I, I don't want to give. Too, I don't want to spend too much time talking. But uh, it's it, like I said. It's safe to look at the camera when in doubt. Look at the camera um, for whoever you're talking to. Robert, nice speech. Um, 
Nice, nice big speech. Um, yes, um, 102 and so on, 102 on. Around 117, um, you know, you're, you're asking for it. Mm -hmm. So don't just say the words, but choose to now, now, you know, you've, you've explained, you've explained everything and now put your fate in his hands, really ask, really okay. demand, you know, this is what, please do the right thing. Come on, mm -hmm. come on, right? Yeah. Say to the king, come on, and we'll be all right. Um, Queen Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth, around 140. I just want to give you an example of um, a place where you can pitch up at the end of the sentence. Not that way, not the way I just did, where we, in people in current parlance always talk like they have questions. And every time they're talking, they're always asking questions like that all the time. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm not talking about doing that. I'm just talking about using, especially in Shakespeare, using the opportunity to pitch something up so that you might have emphasis the way that I'm doing right now so that you understand what I'm saying. There's emphasis at the end of my line. So you might use that technique, for example, at the end of that brief um, speech that you have that starts with, I like thee well in 152. Oh, I like thee well. Bound to France. Yeah, so it has to be, you know, motivated oh. internally. But yes. Okay, France, you mean. Uh -huh. I'm almost done. Philip, um, line 168. Um, oh, you, you probably figured this out. You want to wait till he tells you to rise up. He's going to tell you to rise up. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry yeah. about that. No, yeah. no worries. Everybody remember this. There is now urgency. From the moment Chatillion leaves, there's going to be war. I mean, the Falcon Bridge gentlemen, they have their own urgency. They're there to settle a really important dispute. But uh, Queen Ellen and King John, you only have a couple of minutes. You've got to get going right now. You've got to get to France. So you're going to listen to this, um, to the, this, this uh, uh, question of land ownership between the brothers. But partly you take longer than you would have because you're like, could that be Richard's son, right? So that's the thing that kind of makes you pause before you shoot off to France. But remember, you're about to shoot off to France so we have to get this done quickly and um, efficiently. Does that make sense? Yep. Just remember efficiency, you guys. <clears throat> um, and, and your speech, Philip, lovely, lovely work. Um, it's really lovely. Really, um, I think you can lose yourself in the ecstatic fantasy until you suddenly you know, come back to the room. Okay. Until 2.11 when you come back to the room. Yeah, it was great. By gotcha. lose yourself, I, I mean you can go, this is back to the forget the Shakespeare part, just be alone with yourself with this new ecstatic news. And you just can't help yourself kind of going off into a, you know, <laughs> oh my God. So just feel that you are alone, be non-performative. There's nobody there watching you. I don't care if you turn away from the camera, just experience what has just happened and think about what it's going to be like. Does that make cool. sense? It does, yeah, thank you. Good. Um, and two, yeah, cool. Okay, let's do it again, you guys. Um, right. let's, let's go through, um, let's stop right after, um, right after Essex's speech, right, uh, just before the, the gentlemen approach. Shall I produce them and let them approach? Our abbeys and our priors will, shall pay this expedition's charge. We'll stop there, okay? <clears throat> take a moment, right. you guys, to set, you know, take a moment within yourselves, take a breath, think about where you came from, how long you've been sitting there, or whatever you're doing, and what's about to happen, what you want, what do I want? Now say, Chatillon, what would France with us? After greeting, speaks the King of France in my behavior to the majesty, the borrowed majesty of England here. A strange beginning, borrowed majesty. Silence, good mother, hear the embassy. Philip of France, 
in right and true behalf of thy deceased brother Jeffrey's son, Arthur Plantagenet, lays most lawful claim to this fair island and the territories, to Ireland, Portiers, Anjou, Touraine, Maine, desiring thee to lay aside the sword which sways usurpingly these several titles and put the same into young Arthur's hand, thy nephew and right royal sovereign. What follows if we disallow of this? The proud control of fierce and bloody war to enforce these rights so forcibly withheld. Here have we war for war and blood for blood, controlment for controlment. So answer France. Then take my king's defiance from my mouth, the farthest limit of my embassy. Bear mine to him, and so depart in peace. Be thou as lightning in the eyes of France, for ere thou canst report, I will be there. The thunder of my cannon shall be heard. So hence, be thou the trumpet of our wrath and sullen presage of your own decay. An honorable conduct let him have. Pembroke, look to it. Farewell, Chatillon. But now, my son, have I not ever said how that ambitious Constance would not cease till she has kindled France and all the world upon the right and party of her son? This might have been prevented with easy arguments of love, which now the manage of two kingdoms must with fearful bloody issue arbitrate. Our strong possession and our right for us. Your strong possession much more than your right, or else it must go wrong with you and me. So much my conscience whispers in my ear, which none but God and you and I shall hear. My liege, here is the strangest controversy come from the country to be judged by you that e'er I heard. Shall I produce the men? Let them approach. Our abbeys and our priories shall pay this expedition's charge. Good, 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 good. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I wanted to stop there. That went so fast. It was beautiful. I think we should just um, continue, okay? I'll take it from what men are you. Thank you. What men are you? Your faithful subject, I. A gentleman born in Northamptonshire and eldest son, as I suppose, to Robert Falconbridge, a soldier by the honor-giving hand of Cor de Lion, knighted in the field. What are thou? What art, what art thou? Son and heir to the same Falconbridge. Is that the elder, and art thou the heir? You came not, a, you came not of one mother then, it seems. Most certain of one mother, mighty king, that is well known. And as I think one father, but for the certain knowledge of that truth, I put you o'er to heaven and to my mother. Of that I doubt, as all men's children may. Out on thee, rude man. Thou dost shame thy mother and wound her honor with this diffidence. I, madam, no, I have no reason for it. That's my brother's plea and none of mine. The which if he can prove, he pops me out at least from fair 500 pound a year. Heaven guard my mother's honor and my land. A good blunt fellow. And why being younger born doth he lay claim to thine esteem? <laughs> More time. A good blunt fellow. Why being younger born, doth he lay claim to thine inheritance? I know not why, except to get the land, but once he slandered me with bastardy. But where I be as true begot or no, that still I lay upon my mother's head. But that I am as well begot, my liege, fair fall the bones that took the pains from me, compare our faces and be judge yourself. If old Sir Robert did beget us both, and were our father and this son like him, O oh, old Sir Robert, father on my knee, I give heaven thanks, I was not like to thee. Why, what a madcap hath heaven lent us here. Well, he hath a trick of Cur de Lion's face. The accent of his tongue affecteth him. Do you not read some tokens of my son in the large composition of this man? Mine eye hath well examined his parts and finds them perfect Richard. Sirha, speak. What doth move you to claim your brother's land? Because he hath a half face like my father. With half that face would he have all my land. A half face groat, 500 pound a year. My gracious liege, when that my father lived, your brother did employ my father much. Well, sir, by this you cannot get my land. Your tale must be how he employed my mother. 
and once dispatched him in an embassy to Germany, there with the emperor to treat of high affairs touching that time. The advantage of his absence took the king, and in the meantime sojourned at my father's, where how he did prevail, I shame to speak. But truth is truth. Large lengths of seas and shores between my father and my mother lay, as, my, as I have heard my father speak himself when this same lusty gentleman was got. On his deathbed, he by will bequeathed his lands to me and took it on his death that this my mother's son was none of his. And if he were, he came into the world full 14 weeks before the course of time. Then good my liege, let me have what is mine, my father's land as was my father's will. Uh, Sirrah, your brother is legitimate. Your father's wife did after wedlock bear him, and if she did play false, the fault was hers, which fault lies on the hazards of all husbands that marry wives. Tell me, how if my brother, who, as you say, took pains to get this son, had of your father claimed this son for his? In sooth, good friend, your father might have kept this calf bred from his cow from all the world. In sooth, he might. Then if he were my brother's, my brother might not claim him, nor your father being none of his, refuse him. This concludes, my mother's son did get your father's heir. Your father's heir must have your father's land. Then shall my father's will be of no force to dispossess that child which is not his? Of no more force to dispossess me, sir, than was his will to get me, as I think. Whether hast thou rather be a falcon bridge and like thy brother to enjoy thy land or the reputed son of Curtilion? Lord of thy presence, and no land besides. Madam, and if my brother had my shape and I had his, Sir Robert, his like him, and if my legs were to such riding rods, my arms such eel skin stuffed, my face so thin that in mine ear I durst not stick a rose, lest men should say, look where three farthings goes, and to his shape were heir to all this land, would I might never stir from off this place, I would give it every foot to have this face. I would not be Sir Nob in any case. I like thee well. Wilt thou forsake thy fortune, bequeath thy land to him, and follow me? I am a soldier now bound to France. Brother, take you my land. I'll take my chance. Your face hath got five hundred pound a year, <laughs> yet sell your face for five pence and tis dear. Madam, I'll follow you unto the death. Nay, I would have you go before me thither. Well, our country manners give our betters way. What is thy name? Philip, my liege, so is my name begun. Philip, good old Sir Robert's wife's eldest son. From henceforth, from henceforth bear his name whose form thou bearest. Kneel down, Philip, but rise more great. Arise, Sir Richard, and Plantagenet. Brother by the mother's side, give me your hand. My father gave me honor. Yours gave land. Now, blessed be the hour by night or day. When I was got, Sir Robert was away. <laughs> The very spirit of Plantagenet. I am thy grandam, Richard. Call me so. Oh, madam, by chance, but not by truth. What though? Something about a little from the right, in at the window or else o'er the hatch. Who dares not stir by day must walk by night. And have is have, however men do catch. Near or far off, well won is still well shot. And I am I, however I was begot. Go, Falconbridge. Now hast thou thy desire. A landless night makes thee a landed squire. Come, madam, and come, Richard. We must speed for France, for France, for it is more than need. Brother, adieu. Good fortune come to thee, for thou wast got in the way of honesty. <laughs> a foot of honor better than I was, but many a many foot of land, the worse. <laughs> well, now can I make any Joan a lady? 
Good den, Sir Richard. God a mercy, fellow. And if his name be George, I'll call him Peter. For new made honor to forget men's names, tis too respective and too sociable for your conversion. Now, your traveler, he and his toothpick at my worship's mess. And when my nightly stomach is sufficed, why then I suck my teeth and catechize my picket man of countries. Uh, my dear sir, thus leaning on my elbow I begin, I shall beseech you. That is question now. Oh, and then comes answer like an absy book. Oh, no, sir, uh, says answer, at your best command, at your employment, at your service, sir. Oh, no, sir, says question. I, sweet sir, at yours. And so answer knows what question would, saving in dialogue of compliment and talk them of the Alps and Apennines, the Pyrenean and the River Po. It draws towards supper in conclusion, so. Well, but this is worshipful society and fits the mounting spirit like myself. For he is but a bastard to the time that doth not smack of observation. And so am I, whether I smack or no. And not alone in habit and device, exterior form, outward accoutrement, but from the inward motion to deliver sweet, sweet, sweet poison for the age's tooth, which though I will not practice to deceive, yet to avoid deceit, I mean to learn, for it shall strew the footsteps of my rising. <laughs> Nicely done, team. So good. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you, that was great. Um, I think I, I might just make a few comments, but I think we might, um, Open it up to to uh, to Nathan and Gideon and Gideon and uh, the audience. Uh, is this is this the moment, Nathan? <laughs> Can I just make a few comments and then the I'll moment has arrived. Yes, uh, but but please, uh, it's it's still your show, Gigi. You do as much as you like. I just wanted to compliment my actors, um, uh, Marcelo as King John. You were just you had really strong regal authority this time, and I felt your power. It was really powerful. So. Thanks. I, I lost myself in the looks. I all of a sudden I started thinking about where I was looking and lost a little bit of the thread. But, you know, I just thought, oh, I, if I do one more time, it'll be perfect. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline, you too. Very, very nice strength and entitlement. I felt your um, confidence of who you were. It was, it was great. Really powerful. Yeah. Um, I also didn't know where to look, like, really. That, we, I didn't think that through. Yeah. Yeah, well, we didn't have, we didn't get that far. Um, Philip, beautiful. Um, you know, I, I, you made me, this is the first time I've really kind of gotten the character that I, Gigi, have understood um, the motivation of this character and how he's built. And he's, he's just one of those people who just, you know, he's going to get what he wants no matter what. And he has a charm and an entitlement and the power, personal power. He's a guy with personal power. That's who he is. Personal power, mm. personal charisma. That was beautiful. It's great. Thank you, Gigi. Thank uh -huh. you. And Corinna, uh, just great work. Beautiful, really clear, totally specific. I knew what you wanted and I felt your pain at moments. Uh, all of it, it was all there. So great work, you guys. Um, let's Thank open you, it up. Nathan, what, what do you want us to do now? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, I, I will remind uh, everybody that's uh, here. You can, um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, you know, for the the King John group, uh, you can either put them in the uh, Zoom chat if you'd like me to ask them, or uh, if you, you know, you're welcome to unmute yourself uh, if, if you want to ask, uh, or even if you uh, want to come on camera, that's that's certainly welcome too. Uh, I will share a, a couple comments that came in uh, while you guys were working. Um, and uh, let's see, so uh, Maggie, uh, Maggie uh, had the comment uh, uh, of engrossing, um, and uh, then Peter said, uh, well done all, really enjoyed the difference between first and second run, bravo, clear and emotionally connected. Uh, so, uh, and I did see some, some applause uh, emojis flying around, so uh, uh, people seem to really enjoy it. And, you know, it's it said a number of times when you talk about King John, many people are like, uh, oh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the play or I don't know it or I haven't seen it. And uh, what I personally enjoyed was was getting to uh, explore this scene through the work that you guys were doing. And, and I kind of mentioned this last night, 
I think the, the barometer of a good scene is when you want to see what happens next. You know, you're just kind of so pulled into the story that it's like, well, now what happens? Uh, and, and, and I think that's, uh, that was present here that, okay, well, and of course, this being the first scene in the play, it sets up everything to follow. So, you know, you're very interested of like, well, now what's going to happen with the war and what's going to happen with Philip? I mean, it's a, it's a real, it's a nice cliffhanger scene. So, um, so yeah, no, I thought, I thought it was great. And, um, I, um, I will, I will, uh, ask, uh, you know, of the group and, and again, you know, people can ask questions as they, as they want. Uh, if you can also use the zoom hand raise function and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, I would, I would love to hear from, uh, you know, the actors, what they, uh, found, you know, working as you mentioned, you know, as a weekly, uh, format, uh, you know, even in this short time, how you felt the work grew from week to week or, or things that you were able to discover or, uh, find in the text or things that surprised you. Um, you know, I, I mean, it, it's, it's a bit of a broad question, but by design. So I, I would just be curious to hear from the actors, uh, what your experience of working on, on the scene this way was. Well, uh, if I may, yeah. um, yeah, well, we, you know, we start like any rehearsal, um, in a bit of a fog, uh, meaning that we're just kind of finding our way. Um, there's the language that, you know, this is so layered with the, um, the backstory and, and just figuring out who belongs to who. Who's the father? Who's the, that whole thing is, uh, uh, and it's amazing that little by little, uh, week to week, that becomes a clear with uh, Gigi Self and Gideon Self. Um, and, and then as you're working with the other actors, um, so that that process, which is why I like doing these, is uh, because it is a, always a challenge. And, uh, and what may seem something that, oh, this is fairly easy, this is plain speak, you can understand, you realize it's not, it's, and then that you have to, you have to spend the time with it to uh, kind of figure it out. And, uh, and Gideon, I think I left out that one, uh, kneel thou down, Philip. So I say to you in homage, uh, just right now. Um, so it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been wonderful every time the, you know, these, and I like having the four weeks with a uh, time in between mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it has a you know feeling of rehearsal as this did and 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 then you think oh no if I had just and then all of a sudden I'm, now I'm ready to do it again right 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 well I, I, the point that came up last week is that uh, that as you mentioned that that time between that it it gives it a little bit of time to ferment and marinate in your brain as opposed to having to do it every day and and having it uh, uh, compacted that that this time allows the because there is such complexity. Uh, with either the language or the backstories, especially in this case, Gideon could have talked for an hour just about all the plots and and uh, and, and overthrowing the government, you know, the, the king and all this kind of stuff. So there is so much going on there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's 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 great to great to hear that the the weekly rehearsals uh, can aid in that uh, that journey for you guys. Uh, any yeah, of the I other? Like, actors? I like the format. I like that format. Oh, good, good. The, the, um, the scene, one scene, and yeah, four weeks. Right, right. Um, any of the other actors uh, want to share you know, the experience? Sure, I'll hop in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the it was uh, it, it, uh, really great that you, you expect when you're when you're going to do a Zoom reading, it's we're going to be focusing. Okay, text, 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 and we're going to sit and kind of do our thing. But what was so great the way that uh, that Gigi approached this 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 entire process with us uh, was right off the bat it was remember who you are remember who you are physically this is the world and and it, it I I realized you know so many times when just rehearsing rehearsing a Shakespeare play there isn't necessarily the time or it's forgotten about to kind of get everybody on the same page with where we are and what the world is and sort of what those conventions are and and you know or or if that happens it happens later in the process and everybody starts having to adjust kind of you know th their their performances at that point and uh it was it was really interesting starting from from that place here mm -hmm. on zoom and i think it really it really helped us uh um uh, it sort of it, it kickstarted us into figuring out our characters and uh, and focusing on you know our, our our objectives and that in context of of everybody else in the scene and 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 the grand scheme of things. So that was that was really really cool. 
And, uh, and Ross, in your case, this was a character that you had played before. I didn't, and I didn't know that, you know, you coming into this. So what was it like to revisit just this, you know, this part of that character? Uh, it was awesome. Uh, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a character with a character like this, you know, you play it the first time and you go, man, I want to do it again and again and again. Um, and, um, you know, there were some things that, uh, that 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 even even you know in this in this first scene just just textually I had struggled with the first time through, uh, the first time I I, I worked on, on the piece and and I really kind of took this opportunity um, working with Gigi and with Gideon to kind of to dig in uh, more slowly with more specificity with, with more time uh, to kind of you know uh, uh, answer some some questions I've had like mm -hmm. you know for for years for years since, since that first time uh, and so. Um, you know, I, I love being able to come back to something and and come to a, a deeper understanding of it. Yeah, great, great. Um, with uh, for uh, uh, Karina or, or Madeline, um, you know, what I'm also curious is, uh, you know, since you guys were able to come into this and work with, uh, you know, these experienced professionals, uh, like Gigi and Marcelo and Ross and Gideon and Ursula, uh, the vocal coach, um, you know, I any of that, you know, that you want to share in addition to your experience of working on the text, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear uh, your journey with that. Sure. Um, I really enjoyed breaking that down, um, working through the layers, like starting off the first week and talking about our motivation and then backing up and just working with Gideon and really diving into the text um, and then coming back to a rehearsal, feeling like I had some more, uh, information to add and then the next week working with Ursula and adding that on and um, I so appreciated just listening to the conversations um, mm -hmm. I, um, as Gigi gave people information or, or suggestions and um, after sort of talk, like hearing their thought process through it trying to uh, understand and and figure out that whole sometimes you understand um, what's being asked but you are trying to figure out what you need to be doing <laughs> to um, sh um, show that. And um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed listening to those interactions um, and learning from that. Great. Well, uh, you know, like many of us uh, who have been in an acting class uh, can, can relate, when you're up and working on your scene, you, your brain can tend, can go to mush and you can't process anything the teacher's trying to tell you. But of course, everyone in the audience, it's clear as day what is being said and what's being asked. So it, it can be very helpful to, to have that observational standpoint, uh, you know, in this kind of, you know, to be in the room and to hear the conversations between others. Uh, even if both people, they're communicating clearly, you have the benefit of hearing like, oh, this is, okay, yeah, I see how that would help or, or the stress here or the uh, intention there. Uh, that, that kind of thing is absolutely helpful. Um, oh, it, it's, anything... a, it's amazing oh, yeah, ahead, how, Marcel. no, I was just gonna say, it's amazing how uh, uh, when other people get notes, uh, they are so clear. <laughs> Why aren't they getting that? And you know, and then, and then you get your, <laughs> you think, oh, wait, what, who's, what, was, what did she tell me? Wait, right. what? Or, or, the, or there's the actor uh, mentality of like, but I'm doing that, right? Aren't I doing that? Like, I'm, I'm, I, I am doing that. It's like, no, you're, you're not doing, you think you're doing it, but that's okay. Well, I appreciate uh, <laughs> uh, Gigi. Also, Gigi is so specific um, yeah. in, in the breaking down of the acting stuff that is, um, um, you know, good that sometimes we just forget to mm -hmm. do that, that part of the work. Yeah, well, and, and I think it's a great reminder, uh, you know, a number of people have mentioned it, that, you know, Shakespeare, wrote scenes about real people you know yes they were kings and queens and royalty and all this stuff, but it was it was what was really going on behind closed doors and and that's what made them relatable and why we're you know still talking about it 400 plus years later so you know bringing that that uh, reality to it i think is is helpful and you know to, uh, having that I, I guess i won't call it a modern approach but just having that specificity uh, I think only adds to the scene, um, to the work in, in overall. Uh, Madeline, was there anything you wanted to share? I've enjoyed the process. I agree with Marcelo that, you know, four weeks, one scene, uh, you know, it, it, we get the time, it gets uh, it, the time to sink in. And um, uh, yes, I've enjoyed it. I love acting. <laughs> I love it. You know, and I, I think everybody here in this group is wonderful actor. So I enjoy it very much. 
Oh, cool. And, and uh, I, I do want to get to Gigi and uh, Giddy in a second. But I just want to share a couple more comments uh, from the group. Elizabeth says, uh, love the terrific work. I saw an early rehearsal, so it was good to see how well it all developed. Uh, well done, y'all. Uh, and then uh, Eleanor uh, had a question for, uh, I, I guess it's mostly for Ross. Uh, uh, you know, with your monologue uh, at the end, you, you know, you clearly have a facility with the language in terms of speed. Um, was there a choice in terms of, you know, for yourself, I, I, you know, and I'm trying to parse out her question uh, of, of how uh, your pace was going to be through that? Because it, it gets a little, I mean, I shouldn't say a little, it gets dense in terms of what you're talking about and the imagery you're using. So did you think about, you know, oh, I should, you know, did you ever go through it or think about, I need to really slow this down or, or not? Or how did, how did you approach it in terms of just your pace? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, that's something that, that, that I, I, I do think about pace a lot um, just through, throughout the process. I, I, I will admit at, at the place, I, I'm, not, I'm not done with that piece. I still feel, you know, I, I don't feel like, you know, if, if this were opening night, I would, I, would be, I would be like, no, there's still so much to do, you know? Um, and uh, so, so this is sort of a mid, a mid process, mm -hmm. um, a, 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 a mid process cool. place where, where I feel like I, I am. Uh, I would definitely want to revisit pace, especially for, uh, to make sure that I'm not rushing over Things that are too complex for for clarity and 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 things like that. And honestly, that that last time um, I was I was just 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 for a window in, if that if that's helpful uh, yeah. to match up what 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 you might have seen with what was going on in in my mind that time was I was focusing on that uh, sort of. Um, you know, emotional springboard that, that Gigi had, had had mentioned before this last time, and using that excitement through the first through the first half. Um, I don't know if that is is at all part of the. I, so I wasn't thinking about pace, but I imagine I, I in my excitement I might have gotten I might have gotten uh, sped up at that time, and then I sort of let myself out of that at line two ten or whatever whatever the, the the place was where where he where where he comes out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, so yes i i do think about i think about pace very, very much so when i'm when i'm breaking down how i'm going to be uh doing something eventually that was part of my process up to this point but it wasn't on my it wasn't on my mind that time sure that yeah. And, yeah and and i think you know for a lot of actors there's there's the work that you're doing and then eventually you just kind of trust that it's there when you when you tell the story but uh, I, I think the question was was uh, partly about just your your preparation to that point and, and what I want to also distinguish is that um, I don't think it, it or yeah I, I'm I, I don't believe it's happening in this case but a lot of times actors when they're unclear about something can tend to go very quickly because they're just thinking I just want to get through this I don't know what's going on and I, I don't want anyone to quiz me what's going on. So let me just say this as fast as humanly possible so we can get to the next thing. Uh, and I know you've spent a lot of time uh, working on this piece, including uh, a session with Gideon to really, I think uh, it seemed to really help you understand what is it I'm talking about? What is everything that's going on? So from my perspective, it seemed like you were very clear what you were trying to communicate it's just figuring out how can you then make sure that's clear to the audience is that correct yeah um and and uh, i guess i guess speed isn't necessarily something that that i feel like i need to be afraid of so long as so long as there's a there's a director text coach or whatever you know that's there to say to to to, to let me know like hey hold on you need to slow down um and i think i think if 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 operatives and rhetoric work and everything like that is 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 solid so that it's 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 more than just me knowing what it is I'm saying and trusting that if I know then the audience will know but but actually making sure that I'm that I'm on point with my text work that then you can speed things up and the audience will be able to follow the the uh, the argument and that's that that came, that came from, has come from years of watching um, you know great actors and and some of them um, Dakin Matthews comes to mind like sometimes man he just he is moving at lightning speed and i'm like and and i just feel like it's magic because because i'm 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 understanding crystal you know with crystal clarity everything that he's saying in very dense things right um, yeah 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 I, I mean i i think it applies to you know both shakespeare and, and and certainly shaw that 
and I'll, I will won't be as eloquent saying this, but there's a certain quality where you can go as fast as, as possible as long as you are clear about what you're saying. That the, as, as clear as you are, you can go that fast because the audience will, will, will keep up with you. Um, and and a, a comment just came in as, as we were talking about this that Joe said, I thought the speed the second time added to the character and to my interest about what happens next. Uh, oh, cool. And no meaning was lost because the phrasing was still quite clear. So that, that kind of goes to your point um, uh, that you were making, Ross. Um, thank you. And, uh, and, and thank you all for your, for your comments uh, uh, as they're coming in. Uh, Gigi, I'm, I'm, I'd love to hear uh, your, uh, your experience with working on this scene. I don't know if you were, were uh, familiar with the play at all, uh, or, you know, I mean, certainly maybe uh, in some context you might, you know, certainly have known these characters, but uh, what was it like your journey working on all this? I didn't know the play, um, so thank you for, you know, adding to my repertoire. Of sure. Plays that I've read. I just want to add on to that pace uh, conversation because I, I take some responsibility if, if anybody felt it was too fast because I did urge the actors to be aware of the given circumstances, which, you know, King John has just declared war and uh, Philip is about to join his new, you know, um, men, uh, family uh, uh, on, on, it, on the way to France. He, you know, we talked about he's leaving here to do what? He's got to go grab his stuff and come right back because they're on their way in 10 seconds, you know, to get on a boat um, for, for Calais or whatever. Um, so the urgency, I, we did talk a lot about the urgency of this, of the whole scene from the moment that uh, Chatillion leaves, there's a new, it's like a new, a new world has just, you know, has just happened. England is at war taking a little break to have a little conversation with the, to have, to have to settle a dispute, which then turns into like more important because could this be Richard's heir? And, and so that, that there's a little pause for that. But the moment that that's all resolved, the king and the queen go off because they're preparing to leave and uh, Philip is gonna go pack. So, so he had to have some urgency in that moment of, you know, in between that moment of where he's giddily experiencing this mind-blowing thing that just happened the way you do the way you do in real life you just everything stops for a moment and then he's off so right right take some responsibility for if, if it was too fast and i did i do tend to work quickly because in real life i mean i'm a speedy person as you can see but a lot of people are and a lot of television shows are now so i like to encourage actors to to allow natural human of course, we are faster now than we used to be, I'm sure, much faster than they were um, in Shakespeare's, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it seems that we're just super speeded up now. Everything is just super speedy. Right. But um, I just like it to be natural, to be real. I want it to be real. Mm -hmm. so, um, it was wonderful working with these fabulous actors. All of them are lovely, lovely actors, lovely to work with. I appreciate, I'm speaking to the actors, I appreciate your openness and willingness to hear any and all uh, suggestions or ideas uh, you know that I might have thrown your way um, I hope that I'm open and willing to hear you know alternative ideas of course um, Gideon was just amazingly helpful uh, not being a Shakespeare expert to have Gideon with us gave me and the rest of us such a sense of security and safety um, and I didn't even have to worry that much about it because Gideon was there and I could just concentrate on, you know, the basics of, of a good scene of acting, mm -hmm, good, mm -hmm. you know, taking good material and making it, uh, you know, delivering it in a, in a, in a way that is um, um, dramatic. Yeah, great, yeah, great. Super well, fun, super fun. You know, of course you want 10 more weeks and, of course, yeah. you know, you just want to chew on it for just forever because you can because it's Shakespeare you can just spend you could spend endless amount of time on this one scene you could try right, it 50 right. different ways you could right. you know it's it's just delicious material yeah so oh delicious. that's great so, that's great to hear but really uh, having Gideon there was it makes it's like the difference between night and day in terms of for a, for a non-Shakespeare um expert director to have that blanket of um knowledge um, and, and, and perspicacity and um, acuity and noticing um, was, it was amazing. Yeah, I second that. 
Thank you, Gideon. Well, uh, may, may 2021 be the year of the dramaturge. I, I hope there's a resurgence <laughs> uh, in, in uh, recognizing how valuable that, uh, that, that position can be. And, and certainly in our workshops, uh, you know, all the groups have, have said as much to have someone there that uh, is so knowledgeable about the text and, and having, I mean, even for professional actors, having another set of eyes and ears on it, uh, not, not just, oh, you missed this word, but here's something that will help you make what you're doing clearer. And that, that helps everybody. Uh, and so, um, uh, uh, Gideon, I'd love to hear from you, what, uh, your experience of working on uh, King John. I mean, again, I don't know uh, if you had done much work on it prior to this, but uh, what was it like to, to go through it over, the, over these uh, weeks? Well, I prepared by reading the play again. I hadn't read it in years. Um, I'd seen it, uh, I'd seen it in a good production, but, it's, it's a tough play. There are lots of thorniness um, issues in it. One of them is there is a minimal amount of action. I described to, to the actors and Gigi how later in the play, two big armies come in and they talk and then they go out and then they come in and they talk again. And it's, uh, so it, it's an early play, it's very rhetorical. But um, mainly I, I wanna say what I always say in these opportunities is, first of all, thank you to Gigi for letting me stick around for all those rehearsals and give my notes because I feel like I'm standing up for what Shakespeare means. And that's always a, a pleasure because when I'm working with good actors, which these all are, I get to hear what I tell them Shakespeare means. I say it and then they do it. And it's so satisfying. It's so rewarding. Um, but I also have to say that it's it's great to have to put that out there and then have Gigi with her vision of how it needs to be dramatic, light a firecracker under the actors and make that all energized. Sure. Um, and I I think those two studies have to go together hand in hand. And I've been expressing how luxurious it feels to me to be able to stick around through the process and not have to worry about. Uh, director saying, get out of here, we're blocking, get out of here, it's a tech rehearsal, get out of here, I have to go get a costume and all that, where I can just keep listening to what people are saying and keep tinkering, uh, and it just gets clearer and clearer. So thank you for that opportunity, and thank you to the actors for doing as much as possible what I tell them, because it turns out that the audience has a, a much better experience when they, when they mean what they're saying. This is Dake and Matthew's main theme is it's not, just don't follow all those rules, just make the meaning clear. And if you, if you, my motto is, if you want the actors, if you want the audience to mean their applause, you have to mean what you're saying. You can't skip over those sentences that are obscure, that you're rushing to get through, or you can't, as I used to describe it, uh, be emoting all over the stage and carrying a huge sack of words on your back. You know, it's the opposite. You have to mean every single thing you're saying and know what it is. And then it, it just scintillates and Shakespeare makes it come alive. Why that is, is magical. We don't really know, but he has that gift. Yeah. So. Uh, well, his, his name came up twice. So for anyone who's, who's not familiar, uh, uh, I encourage you to Google Dakin Matthews, uh, 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 I don't think you'll find many uh, uh, duplicates, but uh, if, if you can either, you know, get hold, he's been doing some Shakespeare videos, and if you can either find, uh, you know, somewhere to watch those, uh, or, or any of his other work, uh, and certainly, you know, once we get back uh, into the theaters, if you ever have the opportunity to, to, to see, you know, him act or, or teach a master class on Shakespeare, uh, he's somebody that, you know, like Gideon, has, has spent his life uh, really, you know, working on it and studying it. He started as an English teacher and so came with it from an academic background and then realized or, or got the opportunity to start acting in plays in the summer. And he said, well, I bet I could teach them better if I started acting in them. And that just kind of, you know, uh, uh, snowballed into his, uh, his, his career. And so he's, yeah, he's a wonderful resource. Uh, if you're he's interested. Got great, he's got great uh, YouTube videos that you can. Yes. Can you yes. repeat the name, please? Dakin Matthews, D-A-K-I-R. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the chat. That, that's what I yeah, can use yeah. this chat for. He's one of the few people as dramaturg 
and a teacher of Shakespeare, who, when I listen to him, I say, that's right, that's right, good for you, good for saying that. Almost, I would say, probably 92 and a half percent of the time, if not 95, he's, he's just superb. So, and the issues we, we disagree about, we take up in private and I wouldn't publicize them. <laughs> Um, and uh, let's see, I wanted to uh, also, let's see if I can find it here. Um, we have, uh, we have, we have the, the, the very young uh, uh, baby uh, Falconbridge uh, has now made an appearance. <laughs> um, I wanted to share the uh, links that I had, I don't know where I put those, but I, I can, I'll put those again in here. But again, that I just wanted to remind everyone, again, we're doing As You Like It uh, tomorrow. Uh, at 5 p.m. and then we have a great group doing that. And uh, if you have other questions, again, uh, now's a great time to uh, jump in with those. Um, and uh, if anyone else has anything to share too, that you know, you know this is uh, you know anything else you want to share about the process um, or anything like that, uh, you know, welcome welcome your uh, your feedback and thoughts. As I just as I as I type some stuff out here for the group. Oh, I see there is a hand raised. All right, so let me see. Let me try to unmute Maggie. Maggie, Hi. I think you're unmuted. Um, I um, I just want to compliment everybody as well. I'm I'm relatively new compared to so many people at this, and and I have watched the uh, rehearsals, and I have to say every night the myself accepted the rehearsals start at such a high level, in my opinion. <laughs> and then um, to just see what's happened though in these, these few weeks, it, it, like you say, Gigi, it's, it isn't actually that much time that you get to spend together because each person, each actor is gonna get some of your attention as well. So uh, it was just fantastic tonight. It was really beautiful to see how it had all come together. And um, a question I have, and it may seem like it's obvious what the answer is, but I'd, but I'd like to hear from you, Gigi. How, what informs you in terms of how you approach uh, giving your uh, feedback to the different actors? And also, I want to say, I had no idea that you were not a Shakespeare expert. I don't know if the other people could tell that. Or <laughs> they just were like, nah, she didn't know. I was like, from the very beginning, I thought, yeah, this woman really knows that stuff. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, I'll mute myself for the answer. All right, Gigi, you're, mu you're muted again. I see that, I see that. How foolish of me to, to say that. Of course, I'm, I'm an expert in all things. Um, no. Um, my approach, you know, uh, I'm primarily an actor myself, and I teach acting now, and I direct occasionally. Um, but the approach is from an actor's standpoint. So the work that I do for any role is what I apply to my um, directing. Um, that is to say, to my directing actors. That is to say, I think about uh, the questions I ask myself about the world that uh, the world of the play. So of course, reading the play numerous times, so you're very familiar with the circumstances and the other characters. So I like to look at the whole before I look at an individual role or look at the parts. First, what's the world? And then you get to know the characters and who's motivated in what way. And then I come down, I'm speaking as when I work as an actor, then I come down to the role that I'm working on and what what are my what's my particular circumstance what what happened in the past what's happening now what am I anticipating for the future what is the what is the time you know what time and place am I in um, uh, what are my wounds all that stuff and then what do I want most importantly most importantly what do I what must I have and what's in the way of what I want to get and how what action am I going to take to get what I want. Um, I, use, I use Uta Hagen's book, A Challenge for the Actor is uh, sort of my Bible. So, uh, so I apply all that I use for myself as an actor and I try to pose questions to the actors that will allow them to come to it themselves. I think sometimes when you, um, I mean, as a director, I do make suggestions, specific suggestions, but um, it's always more powerful for an actor to make a discovery him or herself, themselves, 
themselves, I don't know how to say that anymore, themselves, if, if the, the actor makes the discovery themselves, then it is, it is going to inform the work so much better than if somebody tells them what to do. You know, you have to discover it. You have to discover it internally. So, um, so mostly I think asking questions is really valuable and allowing the actor to, to come to it. You know, I, I, I'm meandering, but I hope that answered your question, Maggie. Yeah, thank you, Maggie, for the question. If, uh, if you had a follow up, uh, you know, feel free to raise your hand again or uh, unmute if, you need, uh, if you'd like to. Um, uh, I'll kind of give a, a last call for, for questions, um, you know, from anyone from the audience. I, I really appreciate, uh, uh, you know, the group of, of being here. And I, and I want to thank uh, the King John team for all their work, uh, you know, over the past month. It's been really, really wonderful to see the scene grow. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, if, if there are no other burning questions, uh, you know, please check the chat, uh, you know, for some links. I will definitely uh, send a, an email to everybody that signed up uh, with the replay link if you'd like to go back and watch this. Uh, and, uh, you know, stay tuned. I'm, I'm sure we'll do this again in some form, in some fashion at some point. Uh, so yeah, I, I just really appreciate everybody, uh, uh, not only, you know, the, the King John group here, but uh, everybody attending. So. Uh, that's it. No other questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you again uh, for everybody. And that's it. What I'm going to do uh, is uh, move all the attendees back into the waiting room, uh, uh, or you're you're welcome to uh, you know drop off a call, sign off, and we'll go from there. But uh, thank you again, everybody, uh, for coming tonight and uh, great time. And if the King John team can just hang out for a second, uh, then uh, we'll we'll reconvene and uh, we'll reconvene shortly. <laughs>